Alicia Marie asks, is it common for narcissists to not ever want to meet or go around their partners or spouse's family? If it is, why do they do that? I would really like to see a video about this because I can't find any other videos on YouTube about it. This was a big issue that I dealt with when I was with my ex-narcissist. All right, let's talk about it. So this is actually something that I dealt with as well with one of my exes who for whatever reason would not spend time around my extended family. This became a huge problem because my narcissistic mother had a big problem with it. She essentially forced me to break up with this person because of this behavior. Especially if you have a supportive family, the narcissist is unlikely to want to spend time around them because they don't want to, number one, have your family supporting you too much against them. So if they kind of mess up in front of people or they cause drama in your family, they don't want to be around that situation. And on the other side of the coin, it's all about isolation and why in any case, narcissists want to isolate you from anyone who will support you against them especially. They want your attention, you control all of that for them. Here's a little more information on that. Take a look. So narcissists have a lot of reasons for wanting to isolate you from other people, starting with the fact that very often they're living a double life. But it's bigger than that because here's the thing. When you have people in your life who support you, chances are that you're going to be far less likely to actually allow the narcissist to control you. And in some cases, your family or your friends have controlled you up to this point because we do tend to attract narcissists. But very often, anyone who appears to support you or to go against what the narcissist wants for you is a direct bit of competition for you for your attention with the narcissist. They use isolation against us, quite simply because it allows them to better manipulate and control us, like I said. Sometimes they'll even try to isolate you from your own children in the same household, or from the other parent, if your parent is your narcissist. And the fact that so few people actually really get what you're dealing with isolates you even further because you feel a lot of shame for allowing yourself to even be in that situation in the first place. So there are some real serious truths that we have to discuss here. Narcissistic abuse not only isolates you from the people in the outside world, but also from your own friends and your own family. So part of the reason they isolate you from other people, is, including sometimes their own family, is because if you had access to those people openly, then you could probably find out exactly who they really were a little too quickly. That's why sometimes narcissists don't want you to meet their families unless their families are kind of in on it with them. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of flying monkeys or also narcissists themselves. They are so focused on keeping their false self mask on that they'll do almost anything to protect it. They will be very careful about which selves go out to the world, what images of their family, what beliefs about their family, and they'll do whatever they have to to protect that false mask and that false image of themselves to the world even to themselves at times. One of the things that narcissists tend to do when it comes to keeping you separate from your family is called the divide and conquer. Because the narcissist is so likely to just really ruthlessly pit family members against one another, which they do directly because of the fact that they want to control everybody, they will do things like treat one kid better than the other. We've talked before about the golden child and the scapegoat, for example. And while they're treating that child better, they'll target that other child. So that obviously puts those two children at odds and they may never never ever have a relationship as a result of that. They create this atmosphere in their houses and their homes where everybody's competing for his or her attention, the narcissist's attention and their approval. And because of that, again, they're naturally pitted against one another. If they're always vying for approval, then they can prevent themselves from being attacked by the narcissist. But at the same time, what ends up happening is that if one gets approval and the other doesn't, then essentially they're sort of forced into this position to protect themselves, much like the Hunger Games, you know what I'm saying? Where it's me or you, it's you or me, and what are they gonna do? They're gonna choose themselves, especially as children. And that sort of attitude will continue with them throughout their lives very often, and then you end up with another narcissist. These attacks, they can take a lot of different forms, like they can be narcissistic rage, they can be ridicule, they can be blame, teasing, any of that kind of stuff. When it comes to the partner, the narcissist does things like criticize them, project their own negative qualities onto them, bullying them, violently exploding their emotional vomit all over them. And sadly, because of the fact that the partner does everything they can to try to keep the narcissist happy, a lot of times this means the narcissist ends up being enabled by the partner because they sort of have to support them 
in order to avoid being attacked. So a lot of times the narcissist uses the support, the forced support of the partner to further divide the family. And that of course causes the children then to feel less warmly toward the partner in many cases. And here's the really interesting thing that I don't think a lot of people think of. The fact is that things like the gaslighting and the manipulation usually lead to something that I don't think a lot of people recognize. You become sort of isolated from yourself, as in you forget who you really are, or maybe you didn't even really know who you really are. Your reality is denied often, and so you start to not really understand the world. You go through a lot of cognitive dissonance, which is a conflict between what you actually see and what you know to be true true or what you feel and what you know to be true. The narcissist will project their own corruptness onto their victims, but the cognitive dissonance is created when the narcissist constantly tells you that your reality is different than what it really is and then gets angry when you don't believe it, so you start to question yourself. As long as you agree with the narcissist, it'll be fine, but when the narcissist tells you red is blue and the sky is green and the grass is orange and you disagree, then you start to think that blue is orange. Do you see what I'm saying? This creates cognitive dissonance in you. The cognitive dissonance then undermines your own connection to reality, your sense of reality. It separates you from your own self. You begin to really fundamentally doubt who you are and doubt your own eyes, your own senses, and your own ability to see what's really happening. Because narcissistic personality disorder is so hard to detect if you haven't actually had any experience with a narcissist, this kind of adds insult to injury. When you try to talk to someone in your life about it, even often therapists and psychologists, and by the way, I have a video about how to find one that's qualified for you, so make sure you check that out on my channel. But even if they understand theoretically what narcissistic personality disorder is, it's so hard to detect because number one, narcissists don't think anything's wrong with them, and number two, part of their whole shtick is to put that false mask on and make people believe what they're saying is true. And if, if they aren't displaying obvious signs and someone hasn't experienced this type of abuse, they really truly just don't understand and they might think that you're just whiny or you're not really experiencing abuse but you're just thinking too much or you're reading too many articles on the Huffington Post or whatever. So a lot of times when you reach out for support to somebody like your minister or your psychologist or even your own family, you're told, ah, you're imagining things, ah, you're worrying too much, you're thinking too much and even, like I said, therapists will dismiss it and then you're left going, am I the crazy one? You're further isolated, you're further confused and you don't even know what to do with yourself. This is dangerous advice these people are giving you, but when they say, you know, oh, you should go back to that person, or oh, maybe you guys can try again, or oh, he seems really sincere, or she seems really sincere, you have to listen to your intuition, which the narcissist has taught you not to do. You have to trust yourself, and you have to recognize when you're watching videos like this, or other videos that other YouTubers have done, where you see yourself and you think, are they listening in in my kitchen window? How do they know what I'm going through? That's proof that you're going through something that not a lot of people understand. That's proof that you are being if someone makes your life worse whether they're physically striking out at you or not they're not someone you want in your life regardless of what label you want to put on them it's about someone being healthy for your life or toxic for your life does that make sense so how are you supposed to find support when you you've been completely isolated well there are a lot of different options obviously you can like I said watch the video I did about how to find a good therapist there are tons of online support groups some in-person support groups me personally I offer several options you can join span on Facebook just go to queenbeing.com slash Band. But if you have friends, even if they don't fully understand, friends who truly support you, sometimes they can listen. And sometimes just having them listen is enough. But I truly think that having other survivors to talk with has made all the difference in the world for so many different people. I also offer coaching and a lot of other options. I've got a podcast. Hit up queenbeing.com to get a full scale of what the options are if you're interested. This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you had a narcissist isolate you from friends and family in order to manipulate and control you better? Or why do you think that happened? Have you been isolated from other people by a narcissist? Or is this part of the experience that you didn't have? Share your thoughts and your experiences and your ideas in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Don't forget, Take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right here and right here, plus the videos I left for you in the cards above. Also, while you're here, let's continue on this healing journey together. Hit that subscribe button right there. I'll see you in the next video. That's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon.